All right, hey folks, welcome back to Concept Penny. I'm Greg Holkin. This is the Heroes and Villains podcast where we talk about, you know, a little bit of pop culture, a little bit of product design, geek out together making stuff. So we've talked a little bit about marketing, about how we develop stuff, and today we've got uh, a couple people from our marketing department. We've got Jonathan, who handles a lot of our event development. We've got Hillary, who uh, runs our photography studio. Hi, guys. Uh, Doug's here, as always. Hello. Hello, hello. Not to forget Hi. you or anything. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful intro. Marketing. Marketing is key to everything we do, right? So we are a direct-to-consumer brand, and we don't have, like, a retail space, so you can't, you don't, typically see our product in a retail space at the mall or anything like that. So marketing plays a huge part in, um, you know, presenting our brand and what our, you know, general aesthetic is. So yeah, content, right? That's what we call it. So we create content that goes on social media and or emails and or our website or conventions. Yeah, conventions, yeah. Uh, press releases, things like that. I guess uh, pop-ups too, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then we share a lot of that stuff like with our licensors. They do social media posts and stuff using our content. So we have some super talented people here. We have uh, Jonathan Smith and, and Hillary. So uh, Hillary is our f like extremely talented photographer. I can't say enough about it. Um, it's It's insane. And Jonathan is crazy in all the good ways that he organizes all of our conventions, which is an insane process and can get very stressful and involves a lot of, you know, travel and coordination and stuff. So Jonathan, events, you want to talk events? You want to, I, I don't know, maybe some of your history or something, like how did you end up the event dude um do we want to go through done. full trajectory if full you history. want i mean if you want <laughs> it doesn't have to be full but like you know uh yeah so i'm jonathan you guys have probably seen me at the events slinging you guys product talking to you about all your favorite shows um yeah i've had the past couple years had the pleasure of working with doug and team on helping to bring a lot of their ideas to life and to get the best representation for our fans, yeah. Do you know how many you've done, like, so far? I how many at conventions? At this point, we're at, like, 14 conventions in total. So you've organized 14 of them. Okay. Yep, yep. That's pretty it's been solid. 14 individual stressful events. Yeah. <laughs> each one is their own little monster, right? Like, yeah. each one... Each one is its own little baby, but they all end up being amazing at the end. No matter how much stress we put into it, it always ends up coming out great in the end. Which is crazy. I mean, there's always, like, there's always things to improve on. There's always things that we, like, totally nailed. But, and so, yeah, when we come back, we always have those conversations of, like, what could we have done better? What did we nail? Yada, yada, yada. But like those conventions are literally the like bloodline of the brand. Like that's where we started and that's where we get direct feedback. And that's where we get to hang out with our friends and see all of our fans and interact with, you know, other brands and other, you know, homies that we have within the community. So they're hugely important. I think a thing that you said in a previous episode about it feeling like summer camp is very much the vibe of all the conventions. It doesn't matter what the time of year it is. It's just like all the homies getting together. It's always great. Yes. It's a blast, but it is so exhausting. Like, I cannot... I can't, it's like a... Yeah, we're just trying to add more and more padding to the carpet to, to try and keep our feet alive. <laughs> I, a lot of people may or may not realize like a lot of the fans listening or whatever but the process of you know planning obviously is like months months and months in advance right not only for like the actual execution of the booth but also the product and all the coordinating and everything else but they may or may not realize that like we are there days before the actual show starts. And oh so, yeah, full yeah. week, full week in whatever the destination is. And there's definitely at least two to three days of build up to get it looking good for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> build up and last minute trips to the store. And oh my yeah, God. Doug driving a scooter to Home Depot yes. in the middle of New York to get some Sharpies, things <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I had other intentions. I was trying to get LED lights, but <laughs> they weren't going to work, so I just got Sharpies instead. <laughs> That's the kind of decision making we have to make on the fly at these events, yeah. though. <laughs> Those things happen. Uh, <laughs> yes, and then, yeah, we did have a, a Cut All the Dows uh, Home Depot event. <laughs> <laughs> which was one of my favorite stories. We chopped up every single dowel in the store. Uh, that was great. Yeah, um, yeah, so we had a booth design and we needed more dowels to hang our clothing on. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who aren't familiar, a dowel is like a wooden pole that runs across, it's like in most like closets that hanger. you yeah. just put a hanger on. Right. Anyways, so we go to Home Depot, we needed this very specific sizing and <laughs> <laughs> We're all flustered, running around trying to find the perfect sizing. We go to get it, and I we leave Doug. Doug's so, like, so. I'm going to go get something else. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get these cut to size. But we didn't need them cut to size. I got oh, So here's, here's what it was. We needed, the dowels had to be, it's like 3.333333. Uh, feet right because it's like to fit in this space so in each one each of the spaces was like slightly different so I knew if we had four foot dowels we'd be able to cut them down at the show site to fit and so the dowels we found were eight foot dowels and we took every single one that they had like because it just worked out perfect that if we had every single one of those it was going to fill our needs so we're like running around like madmen we haven't slept you know more than like five hours in the past you know two days or whatever yeah. i went to go get a handsaw so that we could cut them <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's what it was yeah so that we could cut them when we got back and so i said to jonathan i said all right cut them in two and then i turned around and walked away <laughs> And, and so, so I go to the front of the Home Depot, P.S., like Home Depots and like other like states and cities yeah, are always a trip. it's a new experience every yeah. time. You got to figure out the map of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> always a trip. You're like, what is happening? Anyway, so we get, I go to the front of the store, I got a handsaw and I'm like texting Jonathan, like, where you at, dude? And he's like, oh, this dude's cutting them, whatever. And then he comes up and we're like standing there talking. And I'm like, okay, and then we can do this, and then we'll do that. And then and Jonathan's like, yeah, and he's got a Home Depot bucket <laughs> with all these dowels sticking out of it. <laughs> and finally, I, like, glance down at his bucket full of dowels, and I realize there's no way those are four-foot dowels. Like, those are like <laughs> yeah, they were all, like, a solid two-foot, yeah, probably. Yeah, they were all two-foot because I said cut them in two, and Jonathan went and <laughs> Got them all cut in two foot. So we had like this insane amount of two foot dowels and, and none of them were going to work. Yeah, none and of we them had already it. cut up every single dowel in the in Home In the Depot. store, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I was so detached from it. I'm like sitting there videotaping the guy chopping the dowels. I'm like, oh, this is aesthetically pleasing. And I'm just like not even paying attention to the fact. Oh, my God. It was, it worked. It worked out. We solved it, but not without a uh, hilarious event um, in the middle of it. Yeah, so that's just one example of like all the, the crazy, crazy things. Like it's crazy because at the show, there's like so much stuff going on. If you want to talk about it, some like coordinating all the components, how we get them there, the timing of it arriving and like what haps, has to happen before this hap has to happen. And I, I've been to the show before and my crate not be there for like 12 hours and just be laying on the floor while I watch everybody else yep. build their booth. Um, the classic. Yeah. So I know, and yeah, when you're like, why did I fly in for an extra day when I can't even do anything, you know? So usually when we're getting started on a show, uh, I'll talk to Doug and team. They're already usually working on some sort of ideas and they'll bring them to me. And we'll kind of bounce ideas off of each other on how we can execute. Um, in person and then from there we start designing on how we want the booth to look how the product will fit into the space which sometimes doesn't necessarily apply to in person but we yeah it's it's <laughs> always like merchandising we, in person is always its own science bro, like when you look at it on 
when you draw it on a computer and you're like, yeah, this is perfect. And then, and you're like, we'll have all this space. Yeah, yeah, we're you always. get there and you're like, what? This is like way smaller. How are we going to fit all this stuff? Yeah, 10 by 30 seems a lot larger on the internet. You yeah, know? <laughs> 100%. But yeah, and like to that point, so sometimes we will literally pull those samples and if we don't have like the, the display units on hand to like merchandise, we'll literally tape off the floor. And, oh yeah. And yeah. Yeah, and, we've gotten to that point where we are taping off the floor to kind of set up our design for the merchandise space as well. But I think from there we normally end up. Yeah, I mean, we work with some, a couple other vendors, I guess, for build or whatever, but like, in that design process, we come, we build like graphics or whatever, and we have to get those printed on what's called SEG, which that's a comical story as well. Um, so I've, I mean, we've dealt with SEG a bit, like here and there, but like as, because we had a, we had a totally different booth set up um, before Jonathan um, started like exploring more options and like, you know, kind of building out what our what our options are. Star Wars oh, Celebration. Celebration Anaheim. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Celebration can... Anaheim. Yeah, so for those who don't know, SCG is a large fabric that they print the graphics that you see on the side of our booth. Uh, we actually have to stretch that out at the beginning of most events to fit into the wall. One of my first events, and one of the first events me and Doug did, which was Celebration 21, I That believe? was, yeah, that was the first convention back after the pandemic yep which was amazing reception was great it was good to be back but the scg component of it was a nightmare for us um <laughs> was it because the graphic just like stretched out and was funny looking or well we kind of just printed it like a quarter of an inch a little bit too small i guess i don't even think it was a quarter it was like an eighth it, like an I, eighth of an inch I, we're doing it wrong? I don't know. I don't Could... even know, but we, we've we got the whole art stretched out and we're trying to finish this the thing last is, it's corner. It's massive. Too. It's yeah. massive, 10 it's... foot wall, of one giant piece of fabric that we're trying to get tension on. And it's the end of the day. We've all been oh. building this booth all day and so the, the SCG is too small. Dude, there's like, there's like six of us just like manhandling this, like everybody, is down like this. Your hands are right next to mine, pulling and pushing, and mine are right here, pulling and pushing. And you'll get it locked in in one space, and you'll have to hold it while the next guy pulling. We're bleeding. Fingernails are popping off. Yeah, like, like we were actually getting hostile with one another because we were in so much pain from trying to put the wall together. It was astonishing. <laughs> it was, yeah, that was a mess. So I assume that's because, like, you have multiple options when you do a booth like that. You could do, like, center board, or you could do styrene, and you could have it uh, adhered with, like, magnets or Velcro or something. Right. Is that because of weight to try and, like, keep shipping costs down, or is it just easier to handle? Or? Uh, it's easier to handle, and the shipping cost aspect as well. I think it has a better clarity most of the time, because when we see other people at the conventions that are printing on that kind of board, it's usually not as crisp. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, then those the boards are okay if you're doing like solid color or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I think I think so. Yeah, but like big graphics or whatever, it kind of well, and like if you have anything with a seam, they can be really hard to get it to match up right. Right, and that is an issue we've come across before of having the seams like not line up the same way in person as they do on the assets. A lot of our followers or fans, congoers that we see regularly, I'm sure recall what our booth once was and maybe now is there was that was a pretty comical stage unfortunately i missed the like viking funeral send-off of the the old booth and i think that was, that was a new york comic-con right yeah. yeah i had to leave early that year and you guys got to to burn it to the ground yeah that was a satisfying experience for <laughs> sure the growth of the booths over time have been amazing to witness for sure but we were attached to the old one for a long time so yeah we made sure to give it a nice ceremonial exit when we were done with it we had these like lean to display things i mean 
they're great like in concept like they do their job they work very well but they weren't like built all that great and they're very wobbly and they got beat up constantly we'd have to repaint them touch them up whatever we literally had like duct tape and like twine and stuff like holding up our booth yeah it, the the infancy the infancy of us in the con space was definitely duct tape and yes. string holding it all together we had like sandbags tied to this to like hold that <laughs> up and this wall's leaning so yeah it was crazy that and then like the organizational factor in the back of the booth is like always insane the way that works is like we have like just a we have a limited amount of space of storage so it's up to like us and Jonathan to like figure out the best way to like store the most stuff that you can still access without the whole thing toppling over and then we have like excess storage that goes to the back so a lot of times like you guys it shows like we'll run out of a style one day and you guys will be upset but the next day we'll have it back in stock if you're still there at the convention you come by and get it but yeah that's uh, that's always been a struggle is the storage situation and yeah the london experience was great it was awesome. Like, I don't know that we, like, really experienced London, but the well, show. That's because we were too jet-lagged to, yeah. to do much. We did have a day. Yeah, we had you a good, I, solid day. Yeah, afterwards, <laughs> we had an, a day that we just kind of walked around in the parks, and it rained on us, and we just chilled out. But the show itself was awesome. The people were super hype. That was a crazy booth. Like, that's probably the biggest booth we've ever done in terms of like build absolutely yeah absolutely that booth was an undertaking for sure and doing it from over here and it being in a different country it was so stressful wondering how it was going to turn out when what we got gonna, there what it was going to look like and then you and i showed up we showed up like before anybody was there and we went in there and remember they had they were like building all the props and there was like tanks and like big like like at at walkers and like all this crazy like star wars props and stuff just like chilling in this warehouse and then we had that big old rancor illustration and you could see like part of our booth build and the way those dudes built that booth was crazy oh was absolutely cool. plywood like yeah and structure the, over here they use a metal structure called B Matrix most of the time, but in our London show, they hand built the whole booth from wood, which was phenomenal. And they whipped it out in no time, but it was completely unexpected because we're used to like a sh more streamlined version over here. Yeah, to like Tinker Toys type of thing like that. Yep. But that was like full on hand built. And then they stretched the fabric across it. And that fabric was different too. It didn't stretch. It was like, it wasn't like your typical SEG like super thin no, stuff. No, because they stapled it, right? Because mm -hmm. we scaled they the top of it, over it to and rip stapled it, down. it. Yeah, and then yeah, Jonathan and I climbed the top of this rickety booth and cut the rancor off and brought it home. But yeah, so London was awesome. It was amazing. Star Wars Celebration is always a great one for me because it's like so concise in what you, we're doing. You know what I mean? It's it it's not making a decision of should we showcase this or that. It's like let's just show up with our best Star Wars, you know, product. Uh, that London thing was crazy because everything was outward facing. We had so many people working the booth because it was so bonkers that like everybody had to be outside the booth, people in front, people inside pulling. But it was awesome because we got to meet a lot of like really cool people that are work at our London office over there you know they kind of showed us around and uh yeah that was a blast and if we get to go to Japan that's going to be crazy. Japan 2025? Yeah I hope so. I hope so as well. Yeah I think it was a good experience to be in front of people that we haven't been in front of yet because I think like we said we do see a lot of the same people at the cons we meet a lot of new people but it was kind of a cool experience to meet like almost only new people mm -hmm. and to see how much our product resonated with them over there as well. Yeah, you know what was also cool is going over there and seeing people that we knew, mm -hmm. like our homies from the Dad Batch. Yeah, absolutely. They showed up. I was like, whoa, what's up? That was awesome. Yeah, it was the random um, 
pop-ins from people that we didn't expect to see that definitely topped it off. Yeah, it's like, dude, we're in London. That was cool. But no, I have, like, the last one, New York Comic Con, that, that was, we had scooters, man. That was fun. Like, that was a fun one. I always loved San Diego. I just like that town a lot, and I like the lay of the, if I'm going downhill, I'm, I'm going towards the convention. You know what I mean? It's always like... <laughs> That yeah, way. That's my favorite convention center for sure. Yeah. It looks like it's from outer space. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, but no, I mean, it's as far as favorite convention experiences, I mean, so I, I can talk about this dude, but I, I don't know his name off the top of my head. And I've told this story on social media before about the guy with the wallet. It was a trip because I met that dude pre-pandemic um, at the last San Diego, I guess, 2019. He had that wallet, and I was like, bro, dude, that's like one of my first wallets I ever designed for Star Wars, and he's like, oh, cool, and took a picture with him, like had the picture, like, hey, it's the wallet. And this specifically doesn't happen all the time, but there is a lot of times that we I see those wallets floating around. Then the pandemic hits. We don't have conventions for like a full year, whatever. Maybe it's longer. I don't know. But then we go do Star Wars Celebration. Then we go back to San Diego Comic-Con. This dude, like everybody's in masks. So you don't know who's who. Like it was just weird. And so I'm like walking in the hall outside of the booth. Like I don't know if I'm going to get a coffee or whatever. And I hear this dude, hey, Doug, hey, Doug. I turn around and it's dude in a mask. I'm like, I don't know who you are, but clearly you know who I am. And he pulls his mask down and he's like, the wallet, the wallet. And I was like, oh. And then like all of a sudden it snapped in my head like, oh, this is that dude. And he's like, hey, I've got the wallet. And he reaches around in his backpack and he pulls the wallet out. And he's like, here, man, it's for you. It's for you. And I'm like, no, 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 it's cool. You don't have to. And he's like, no, nah, man, full circle. Here you go. And gives me the wallet. And then so I got him a new wallet to replace that wallet because he was using a different wallet. It wasn't an HV wallet, so I had to Gotta square fix him. that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to square him away. But then I met his whole family and his daughter is studying fashion design. And she gave me a T-shirt from like one of her events or classes or something. And it was just a really cool. It's just like the epitome of the reason why we want to share those experiences um, just kind of summed up in that one situation there. And it's not to say, like, there's those those things happen all the time. Um, yeah, I think one in London that was funny for me was there's a couple that we see at all the events that they're always wearing our collection from the previous event. And I had just gotten, like, five minutes to go grab some food at Celebration. And so I ran to that little bottega downstairs in the basement and I see the couple down there at the bottom of the steps, and I was like, oh my god, I love your jacket. Uh, can I get some photos of you and your wife? He's like, yeah, yeah, of course, and he's posing the whole time. And as I'm taking photos, more and more people just keep coming down the stairs in HV clothing that's from like past <laughs> seasons. And I was like, okay, just everybody, let's yeah. all just continue to pile in here. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's some of the most fun stuff is seeing the product in the wild and when somebody's like decked out head to toe yeah the like, full hv fits go. are always impressive yeah i want to see more of that and they got the bag and the hat and the jacket and the hoodie and like you're like yeah dude you're doing it i think that's the nice thing about the conventions though is like we spend so much time looking at things here designing things on our own accord kind of having an idea of what the fans reception will be but it's always super enlightening and refreshing to kind of see their face when they see the product in person and see how excited they are about the little things that we took time to put the details on. For me, that's always one of the most satisfying experiences at all the shows that we do. Yeah, I, I agree. And I wish, you know, I wish that everybody could go to these shows, like that we could just include everybody because it is refreshing and inspiring to get that direct feedback and to talk with the people on the other end that you never see, you know, like for a lot of the design team here, it's weird because it's like a disconnect. It's, I mean, they're all fans. Like, yeah, but we're locked in a room designing stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Greg's over here <laughs> locked in a room designing. He, he doesn't get to see the reaction. Yeah, exactly. He can't, he doesn't get to participate in like the, the end result of that. And that's, that sucks. I mean, 
and so you know we try to we try to bring folks out i think hopefully that'll be a you know an ongoing initiative because i do see it i feel it i've always felt it when i go to a show and then when i come back i'm like recharged like hey this is working like let's go and we want to make those people happy and a lot of ideas derive from those conversations and or just like seeing people and what they're wearing and what they're relating to that's always like super inspiring. Um, we don't usually hear a lot of these convention stories when you come back because you're just you're ready to go. You're like well yeah there are a few days where you're yeah. like worn slick. I'm but down. Because yeah, we haven't slept in five Down days. for a little bit but then yeah when it's when I'm back up had my sleep or whatever it's it's time to to rock out. Yeah so Jonathan like I think Prior to you managing the events, I used to do panels a, b a good bit, which was I'm Why did you stop? dying for hey. a Doug panel oh again. Oh my God, it was a trip, dude. That was the wildest thing. And Hillary, I guess you probably participated to a certain extent in the, the photography and the content and stuff that we would build for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like full on sitting on a stage in an auditorium with like, I mean, it had to be 250 people or more, like maybe 500, I don't know. It was like a movie theater full of people. And um, they're all there for the Doug to, show. You're discussing HV and. Yeah, and like the design, behind the design, like there was a couple different ones that I did, but it was cool because like, I would be on stage with our buddies like from the industry. And that's like that literally where I met several of them. That and then like within the Lucas Pavilion, right? Like they're all there. But yeah, and then we would just all talk about like our design process and like our newest collection and yada da 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 da. And it was a trip, dude. Like it's a trip to be like, like really? Am I this guy? Like I don't feel like I'm this guy. Like should I be up here? I don't. This is weird. Imposter <laughs> syndrome's yeah. kicking in. Yeah, exactly. You're like, can I get a water, please? <laughs> but yeah, so that was a trip. We haven't done that in a long time. Thank God. 2024 Doug panels coming in Let's hot. Go. Let's go. Oh, we're going to do a Jonathan panel. That's what the people really want. That's right. Give the people what they want. So anyway, okay. I don't know. Is there anything else in conventions? Like, Greg, do you have any? Like, because you've only been to... I've been to the one pop-up, yeah. Yeah, you've been to the pop-up. And, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you've gone to some conventions, but... So you guys hire people to help you out? Because yes. I assume we don't send just a whole raft. Yeah, we have an amazing team of people that we hire for each event. You've probably seen a lot of them alongside me and Doug. Um, they've become a recurring part of the team. And, yeah, we would not yeah. be able to do it yeah. without them. You met Yeah, Eddie. you met Eddie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Eddie's cool dude. Yeah. Yeah. So Eddie's, Eddie's the point dude there. Like, there's several guys that we've worked with for years now at this point. Um, Truly. From, from since, that. Since my first show to now, they're just as embedded as we are. Yeah. And they are like, they are fans. They sport the product. They buy the product for their dads and for their, you know, relatives and stuff. And they're, they're like full on. So each one is intricate, right? Like this is the D&D &D nerd dude. And then here's the like anime nerd dude. And this guy knows everything about Star Wars and this guy's a gamer or whatever it's like they're all just like any of us yeah, we right? try to build a well-rounded cast so if any of us is lacking in one place the other person can help pick up yeah and they're awesome like they work in that world right so right. like they understand how the conventions work like it took me a, a while to be like okay where the hell is the crate and who do i talk to to get my crate and like where's all my product and like how many pallets were there and like you know what i mean crazy it's a ton to keep track of yeah so it's great when you have a team that kind of already knows the flow when you walk into it totally green it's a lot to take in and actually function and do the job because you're like trying to absorb all of all of what's happening and you got billions of people running around in the booth and like you're yeah it's uh it's crazy it's gotten a lot more mellow like now that we kind of have those folks in place no i will say that like hearing you guys come back each time you come back there's a, there's a little bit less uh grousing yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, we're just, we're trying to... You're getting it dialed in. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to hone that down to where, you know, it's always like, 
should we take five t-shirts? Should we take 10? Should we take two? Like what, should we take more hoodies than tees? And like, there's all those things that go into it um, that we're trying to figure out. And again, it, yeah, it boils down to space, manpower, shipping, costs, crates, pallets, all of that chaos that Jonathan. That's made. my world. Yeah. <laughs> that carpet, padding, uh, freaking Wi-Fi, internet, lights, like. Yeah, I think the, path from the first show I took till now has been pretty good. We've improved on a lot of things across the board. I think that we've also like set the level of expectation with the fans that like we're gonna we're gonna show out like we're not gonna just you know pull and drape it and which I think inspires us more for each show because the more we take the time to do those extra things and the fans resonate with it, the more it just makes us want to do it more right. and more. And it's like right making it sound. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's and it's also it's a challenge too. It's like, well, can you do better next time? Like, yeah. We love yeah, challenging ourselves go. here. Yeah. Yeah, what's the budget? Uh we're not talking about it. Well in that right there. Yeah, cut the budget <laughs> cut the budget part out. <laughs> so Hillary. Yes. Yes. You are a phenomenal photographer. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, how long have you been a professional photographer? Professional photographer, probably since 2010. I've been shooting my entire life, but professionally and getting paid professionally, um, 2010. So it's been a minute. Yeah. Happy to be here. That's as long as I've been here. It's like, what's your background? How did you, other uh, than having shot your whole life? but like So... In college, I shot for several magazines um, on campus, as well as a couple DFW publications, um, just trying to get my work out there. I started photography like at the actual school at UNT. I did not make the photo program and went off and did my own thing and graduated with a just multidisciplinary degree and um, I was advised that if my work can speak for itself I don't need a piece of paper so that's kind of what I did and um, got various internships around the area started with jewelry um, licensing and eyewear licensing and then slowly moved over to and started doing the apparel and accessories part of it yeah I agree 100% with that perspective on schooling obviously it teaches you certain things of course yeah. um, talent is talent but yeah so Hillary does an amazing job and I think that the the main reason that she does such a good job is that she understands the brand and she understands the vibe and to be able to take and Jonathan plays a part in this as well totally. as with like the styling and everything that's another whole thing that we didn't even mention Jonathan's the oh yeah not only does he do shows and everything <laughs> else and keep everybody else's lives together he's also my right hand um, produces all of my shoots um, from concept to literally putting the final touches on the model before I press the button he so, actually yeah. models sometimes exactly too. yes reluctantly he's yes. often in front of my lens as well multifaceted human over here yeah um, but yeah, we we sell the fantasy. Um, it is very important to discuss with the team beforehand what we're trying to give to our audience. And just shooting it on white, while the product might be stellar, won't always tell the full story. So that's why we go to the silos. That's why we go to these random spots in New York, just to kind of put it into the real world so i've worked with you for a while yes um when we got started there was a lot of this like hey doug so what do you want to do what do you want to do with this what's the vibe da 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 and then i would like put together like this you know directional of like pie in the sky a lot of it was like ridiculously over the top that i you know <laughs> like, 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 yeah let's go to outer space and yeah shoot. let's make an imperial yeah. hallway yeah, from exactly. exactly from the spaceship yeah. like, <laughs> so um but as time has progressed what has happened is what we all wanted is that you know just as well as i know or jonathan knows or greg what it should look like it's pretty telepathic at this point yeah and you yeah. nail it over and over. Thank you. So, and that it's crazy because I see photos, I can automatically tell 
Hillary's and somebody else's. Oh my God. Like I see that <laughs> happen, but the crazy thing is that like a lot of people I've talked to don't grasp the fact that a photograph like takes work and there's a reason behind everything about it, like the grain or the lighting or the everything else. Like a lot of people just kind of slough it just off. Just point my camera, my phone at it. And yeah, and press the button. the button. Press yeah. Button, no more. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like think about looking at a Pottery Barn m magazine. There's a specific aesthetic to the photography within that Pottery Barn magazine versus going and looking at a, some death metal magazine or like REI magazine versus, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Lots of decisions have to be made, like how like how are you going to lay out the merchandise? What kind of background is it going to be on? Is it going to have a shadow? Is it not going to have a shadow? Is it going to, yeah. Like I said, like the grain, is it gritty? Is it smooth? Is it clean? Is it, you know, happy? Is it dark? Is it, yeah. You do a phenomenal job with that. Is there any, like, do you want to expand on any of that? Like, I know you guys set locations. Were there any, like, awesome shoots that you're, like, super proud of or like really cool places that you've discovered through through those shoots and cool people? I think with every shoot, depending on if it's like a bigger collection or for a show or something like that, we look at the product and kind of decipher, and I say we, Jonathan and I, look at the product and decipher what the vibe is and what the bigger story is that we want to tell. And then everything else kind of comes together. We do a lot of different peer spaces where um, it's just a very specific vibe per that location and then we can style it out that way. We've shot in New York before. That gives us access to models that we don't have here in Texas, and that's also really exciting. They tend to be a bit more experienced and booked up there in New York just because of the pace of it all. Right. And so it's really cool to work with those more editorial-style models, um, and that's really fun. And then it all comes back to styling, really. Um, Jonathan's phenomenal at sourcing pieces from all over the country, really, and just having a giant Rolodex in his brain of this will look good for this and he picks things for collections that haven't even been designed yet and then once we get the clothes he'll be like oh yeah that's that will go perfectly with this and then we have a perfect spread of things a mixed market samples as well with what's already been designed but I just really enjoy conceptualizing things the whole fantasy I keep going back to fantasy because that's kind of what our realm is and just bringing that together and making things seem wearable and making things more relatable and obtainable mm -hmm. to the customer I think is is really satisfying you guys create so much awesome content I, it's like sometimes I feel sorry because we can't utilize all of it you know what I mean <laughs> right. like it feels that way sometimes but I think that like we have so much in the archives you know when we go back to like remessage something or well, I so I always build lookbooks out of those all of your photo shoots so like I share those with our partners and you know Maybe we're trying to like solidify a new partnership or something. Like I use all of that stuff and build lookbooks so that I can show people like here's what we do. The fact that like all of those all of that photography has a specific vibe makes it like that much more compelling, right? Like if I was just showing CADs flats, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like boring, right? Yeah. Um, but like the lifestyle stuff, uh, the in world like feel really like gets the point across so that's amazing do you want to tell us about like your your space and like how that's evolved over time okay I started shooting for H&V in what was a closet pretty much it was a very very teeny tiny space um, and we made it work and then magically fast forward about seven or eight years we got an amazing content space in our new warehouse and we're able to build and tailor pretty much to any whim or need. Um, Jonathan's also an excellent um, craftsman and builds us almost everything <laughs> that we that we need. So yeah, we've got several little rooms right now. We've got a VHS like store living room. Um, we've got a a void like psych wall that we shoot on, and we're 
pretty much just allowed to go crazy freedom wise, um, creative freedom wise, and just build whatever we want for whatever we need. That space is awesome. We've come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> We've come a long yeah. way. I think there's further to go. Honestly. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. Like Our we, story's not over. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. We've we're making progress. What is that thing called? It's like an infinity wall type. Yeah, infinity wall is a better word for it. It's in newsrooms. It's called like a cyclorama wall, and it's like a um, what do you call it? The how it yeah, bows. It's like a mini ramp. Yeah. Mini ramp. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's it has just all no white. Corner. Yeah, no corners, um, and you just can when you shoot into it, it's kind of like a white void. Yeah. So like the walls come down to a mini ramp to the floor. Yeah. So it just like blends into the floor. There's no hard lines, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So no shadows. So you get like a weird illusion of like super depth. Right. Super like depth. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Space, which is awesome. Um, and then you guys do crazy things like project flames and stuff, right? Oh yeah, we've got like, a bubble machine. Bubble we've machine, got smoke machine. We've got a bubble bazooka. We've got we've got it all. We've got a lot of bubble equipment. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a fog machine. Yeah, anything. Yeah, anything that you could think of. You can do it. You um, guys did some uh fun lighting for a, a little Marvel project a few months ago, the scrolls where it was like all multicolor and Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. We have bunch of different gels, lighting options. Like the cold weather sets that you just did also. Oh yeah, we also have fake snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's like apparently there's a mountain there somewhere and like some snow. Yeah. And yeah. You know, I never thought about this before, but with fake snow, do you like sweep it up when you're done and use it again we're, later? Or we're currently awesome. running an experiment to see what happens if we just leave it there and fix <laughs> yeah. it back up. So it's a dry silicone bead. Super, super teeny, teeny, tiny, almost like sand, but it's silicone. And when it mixes with water, it expands. And so how we had it with the models, we just, at that point, once it got on the ground, you could just sweep it back up. But it's like ever so slightly damp. But of course, it doesn't melt because it's silicone. But... We're trying an experiment right now where it's all in a pile. So we have like a little snow pile right now and we're seeing how long it takes to shrink back down to its silicone sand form. Is it is it shrinking? Yeah. Cool. I wonder if it's anything we'll like... You on yeah. Like we'll come on the next episode and let you know. Photo every day of the <laughs> yeah. pile. Give you a snow update. Uh, I was hoping it'd just be a one night thing where we come back. And it'd, it'd be like, like this like, big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's like silica beads, like in the do not eat package that comes in stuff you buy, that stuff, first off, it's not actually toxic. It's just the CYA. But uh, the other thing is uh, you can take that and put it in the oven and cook it on a low setting and it, all of the moisture will evaporate out and you can reuse it. Wow. So if you had a toaster oven or something with a low enough setting, you guys might be able to experiment and see if you could. Just lights over it. In yeah. patches. So next segment, so. we will have experiments yeah. with Greg where we try <laughs> all scientific things relating to silicone and <laughs> water-based products. Eye protection. <laughs> yes. Did you guys try making snowballs out of it? and like? Yeah, it's kind of almost mashed potato-y. It didn't in have texture. A good factor to it. I would have loved to have hit her with a snowball for sure. <laughs> uh, thank you to Hillary and Jonathan and Greg uh, for joining us today. Content pending, Heroes and Villains podcast. Check out the website, heroesvillains.com. Check us out on social at Heroes Villains Brand. And y'all have a good one. We'll see you next time. Yay. Yay.